Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Today I am sharing myths and misconceptions about femininity. I have touched on this topic in the past in my video, Why It's Okay to Be a Girly Girl. I will leave that right here if you haven't watched it. And if you haven't, I highly recommend it, especially if you are a girly girl like me and if you need someone to relate to because all the things that you have heard and gone through regarding femininity, I have probably been there. <laughs> so sometimes it helps. Today I am talking about those beliefs that other people or even ourselves believe about femininity and what it is to be feminine, myths, misconceptions, and stereotypes of femininity. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. The first misconception about femininity is that you can only wear pink and dresses. This is crazy. <laughs> I do wear a lot of pink. I do wear a lot of dresses. I wear dresses in pretty much every circumstance. They're really comfortable. I feel most like myself in them and they're really pretty and put together. So. I mean, why wouldn't you? But dresses are not for everyone and that is okay. And that does not mean that you are not feminine because you do not like dresses or skirts. Also pink, I feel like most feminine uh, girly girls do like pink and it's not because they are forced to like pink, but I just find that it's a happy coincidence. We love pink. It's okay if you love pink and it's okay if you don't love pink. Just because you don't like pink doesn't mean that you can't be feminine. There are plenty of feminine people out there that do not wear pink at all. And when it comes to clothing, it really depends on design elements for femininity. There are certain fabrics, there's certain um, designs and silhouettes and things like that that make an outfit feminine and it doesn't necessarily Necessarily have to involve pink. I actually have a blog post on this topic and I believe it's called how to look feminine without wearing pink. I will leave that in the link below if you would like to read it and if pink is not your color but you still love femininity and you want to dress feminine I think it's a really good post to check out but I just want to say that no you do not have to like pink or wear pink you do not have to like dresses or wear dresses in order to be feminine. You also do not have to wear florals or polka dots or lace or tool skirts or anything like that. There are so many ways to convey yourself as feminine and to be feminine without having to immerse yourself in traditional feminine dress. The second misconception of femininity is that girly girls are weak. And this could not be further from the truth. Some of the most feminine people that I know are some of the strongest. I feel like femininity and being a girly girl is seen as weak and I feel like a lot of this has to do with pink and dresses and frills and the feminine energy coming off as more sensitive and at times maybe more emotional and just being kind and having a good heart, maybe being soft-spoken. It doesn't necessarily mean that we all have these qualities or that we all want to have these qualities. It just means that stereotypically femininity is seen as a weakness. Why? I have no idea. For me, it's my strength. I love being feminine and I love sharing it with other people, including all of you, because I feel like not enough people are feminine anymore. And I know a lot of this is out of fear. Of course, there are people out there that just don't want to have anything to do with femininity. And that is okay because that's who they are. But for people that it is who we are, we're scared because we don't want to come off as weak, especially if we are independent and if we are trying to get ahead in life or in work. If we are overly feminine, then people take it as a bad thing. And I really don't know why. Honestly, I feel Feel like this has to do with society and how feminine people have been treated and portrayed in the past, especially in the media and movies and TV shows. If you look back on a lot of older movies that many would consider to be chick flicks or even like old Hollywood movies especially, feminine 
women are portrayed as dependent, that they cannot be independent, they can't make it on their own, and they are seen as needing to be rescued or whatever. But here's the thing, as people, we possess qualities that are both feminine and masculine. We have both. <laughs> and you know, the balance of it depends on each person. Some people lean more masculine regardless of their gender, and some people lean more feminine regardless of gender. But we all have both qualities. And having one more than the other or showing traditional signs of femininity should not be considered a weakness. It should not be seen as weak, and we definitely should not be afraid to share our feminine qualities and to be feminine just because other people perceive it as weak. The third misconception about femininity is that girly girls are immature. For whatever reason, when someone dresses feminine or overly feminine because they like it and it's who they are, they're seen as almost juvenile. Just because they like to wear fun prints or bright colors or frilly things that they are somehow childlike. And I know that there are certain fabrics and colors and design choices that do make clothing a little more juvenile. However, there are definitely ways to style yourself or to wear the things that you like and gravitate towards while also still being age appropriate and elegant. Girly girls are also seen as overly sweet and this can also come off as a juvenile. So one word that people always use to describe me is sweet. And I am. <laughs> I'm a really sweet, caring person. I have a big heart. I love helping other people and I love that about myself, but I don't take that as juvenile or a weakness. In fact, I feel like it's one of my strengths. I am empathetic and I care about others and I love to help and that is definitely a strength and I wish that more people would see it that way because a lot of feminine people are also that way and they feel like they can't truly be themselves and they tend to put on a rough exterior sometimes because they don't want to show that soft, sweet, gentle, caring side of themselves to others because they don't want to be made fun of. They don't want to be seen as weak and that's definitely a problem. Why can't we just be who we are and be recognized for that. The fourth misconception about femininity is that you have to be rich. This cannot be further from the truth. Spoiler alert, you can still look great and stylish and feminine on a budget. In fact, I have a video that shares different tips on how to look good on a budget, so I will leave that right here for you. It has a lot of good insight in there, and there are a lot of ways that you can look expensive without having to spend a lot of money. And when it comes to femininity, in my opinion, being feminine has nothing to do with being rich. Being feminine is a mindset. It's a style. It's not about how much money you have and how much you can spend on your clothing. To me, that has nothing to do with femininity. When it comes to looking feminine and presenting yourself in a feminine way, yes, there are certain fabrics and certain colors and certain prints and certain design details and silhouettes that do lean on the more traditionally feminine Side, but it doesn't mean that you're feminine or not if you're wearing those clothes. You can still be feminine and not be in a frilly dress. But if that is your style, all you have to do is look for certain design elements and then look for something that is within your budget. So you can definitely look feminine and pretty and put together without having to spend a ton of money. The fifth misconception of femininity is that you have to be superficial and materialistic. This is also not true. People that dress feminine, they tend to appreciate the beautiful things in life. They like pretty things. There is nothing wrong with that. And if you have the money to 
buy something, let's say a Chanel bag or something like that, and it's within your budget and it's something that you want, there's nothing wrong with that. But for people to think that feminine people are shopping addicts or just want to buy things all the time or that they're materialistic and all they care about are the things that they put in their closet, that's just not correct. For me, yes. I love clothes and for a lot of curly girls out there, I'm sure that they will tell you the same. We love our clothes and our shoes and our handbags and our jewelry because it's beautiful. It's aesthetically pleasing. It makes us happy. So just like other people like to collect things, we like to collect things too and there is nothing wrong with that. And for me, fashion has always been my thing ever since I was younger and now it's my job. So of course I have a lot of clothes, but it doesn't mean that I'm materialistic and that I am tying my worth to my wardrobe. Absolutely not. It's like art in a way and it's a creative outlet for me and I feel like a lot of people feel that way. In terms of being superficial, I don't feel like I'm superficial at all and I feel like a lot of people think that feminine people or girly girls are more superficial just because they are drawn to beautiful things and clothing and that sort of thing rather than people that are traditionally more masculine in their personality. Clothing and things, material possessions, that is not all that we care about. That is not all that I care about. I care about causes, I care about people, I care about so much and those far outweigh how much I love my clothing. And for people to tie femininity to materialism and being superficial is just kind of crazy to me because it's like we're all different but just because we have this one thing in common doesn't mean that that's all that we care about. So I just have to put that out there because that's a really big one that people seem to believe. The sixth misconception about femininity is that girly girls are not intelligent and let me tell you this one makes me rage because <laughs> I feel like this is so true and this is another one that is portrayed in media and especially movies, TV shows. The girly girls are always seen as less intelligent than the main character or everyone else pretty much. I mean, look at Mean Girls. <laughs> so here's the thing, you can be feminine and smart. Why not? Femininity has absolutely nothing to do with our intelligence. And yes, you can be smart and want to look good. You can be smart and want to do your hair and makeup. You can be smart and be into clothing. <laughs> you can be smart and wear pink. Are you kidding me? People make it out to be some kind of crime to wear a dress and be intelligent. There are plenty of feminine people out there that have really cool jobs that take a lot of intelligence to do and they look good while they're doing it. It really has nothing to do with anything. Like, you can have both, it doesn't have to be one or the other, but society makes it feel like we have to choose. We have to either be this or this. We can't be both, but here's the thing, you can, and a lot of people are. Side note, another thing that I have noticed is that some feminine people really do believe this stereotype, and as a result, they kind of dumb themselves down in order to be accepted by other people because they don't want to get made fun of or they don't want to be seen as different or whatever. Like, there's so many reasons that people do it, and it usually has to do with being accepted by society. And I think it's so wrong. I think that you should let yourself shine. Be smart, be pretty, be stylish, be all of these things and do it with confidence. And I feel like that is so important. I feel like it will change your life. The seventh misconception about femininity is that girly girls have no personality or they are fake. 
this is also so not true. There are so many feminine people out there that have amazing personalities and they are most definitely not fake. So here's another thing that I feel like society has made a thing, I guess you could say. It's made other people believe that people that are into clothes, you know, they're superficial, they're fake, they're this, they're that, and that they must be some kind of shallow person without a personality and that they care so much about what other people think that they conform. And trust me, I have been there where I have cared so much about what other people thought of me that I was afraid to be myself. I was afraid to let my true personality shine because I thought people wouldn't like me. You cannot be everything to everyone. There are going to be some people out there that just don't like you and maybe it's because of the way you look, maybe it's because of your personality, maybe it's because of the way you dress, maybe it's because they just don't like you and that is okay. But it is okay to be yourself. It is okay for you to let your personality shine. And I know a lot of people tend to think that feminine people have certain personality traits and I am here to tell you that we all have our own unique blend of personality traits, both feminine and masculine. Just because someone is seen as a feminine person or identifies as a feminine person, it doesn't mean that they are only in line with certain personality traits. We are all different kinds of people and that is what makes us special. The eighth misconception about femininity is that you must have a traditionally feminine job or feminine hobbies. No. <laughs> I, okay, <laughs> I have so many thoughts on this, but no, you absolutely do not have to have a traditionally feminine job to be seen as feminine. If you are a homemaker, that is totally fine. That is seen as a more feminine thing, and that is totally fine. But if you want to be a boss of a company or a CEO or run your own business or work in a male dominated industry, that is okay. It doesn't make you any less feminine. Just because one is more feminine than the other, <laughs> it doesn't mean that you are any less feminine. And as for hobbies, yes, there are certain things that lean more traditionally feminine. But as I said, we each have a side of femininity and masculinity. So there are hobbies from both of those that we may enjoy even though we see ourselves as a more feminine person. For example, I'm a musician. And when I used to tell people that I would play guitar, they'd be like, oh, like Jewel? And they'd be like, yeah, like Jewel. No, it was like Van Halen, like shredding on the guitar, playing classical um, rock and solos and Metallica and, I love music, I love rock music, I love playing my guitar, but I also love playing piano, which is seen as a more traditionally feminine instrument, and I love playing other things as well. I also love hiking outside, which is traditionally masculine, and I love putting things together, building things. I love science, I love math, I love so many different things, and I run my own business, which is seen as traditionally masculine. But I enjoy a good book. I love going on picnics. I love tea parties. I love going through my closet and just imagining all the amazing places I'm going to wear my clothes. I love doing my hair. I love putting on makeup. I love crafting. We all have interests that span both masculinity and femininity, and that is totally okay. That's what makes us special. That's what makes us unique as people. And lastly, the ninth misconception about femininity is that femininity is only for certain people. Absolutely not. Femininity is for anyone who feels drawn to it. It's a mindset. It's an attitude. It's not just in the way you dress, but that is how people express themselves outwardly. But it's all internal. It's in here. Femininity does not discriminate. It doesn't matter what your gender is. It doesn't matter where you grew up. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. Anyone can be drawn to femininity and that is the beautiful thing about it. There are so many people that feel like they have to hide their femininity. 
because they feel like they won't be accepted by other people. But I want to tell you, this is a community. We all accept each other. We all embrace this side of us and we celebrate it. And that is something that is so special. Femininity is not just about appearance. It goes so much deeper than that. Yes, we do choose what we want to show the world and how we want to portray ourselves. But for the most part, dressing feminine is an extension of who we are and how we express ourselves in a creative way. And yes, there are people that do dress a certain way in order to be perceived a certain way by other people or in order to be accepted by others but I am a huge advocate of being yourself and embracing all sides of yourself your true femininity shines when other people aren't around it's who you are inside we are all drawn to certain things for a reason and so many people they try to rid themselves of this they try to be something they're not because deep down they know that they want to be a feminine person but they feel like they're going to be made fun of. We need to stop judging other people. Aside from my jobs and my hobbies and things like that, I do possess traits that are more masculine than feminine. For example, I am very independent. I am also motivated, ambitious, and driven. I love working for myself, and I love working in general. It's something that brings me so much joy, and it makes me feel like I am doing something good. I feel like people tend to think that this type of behavior is more masculine because in movies and things like that, the more masculine characters are usually driven by fame, money, power, that sort of thing. But those are not the things that drive me. What drives me is to help others spread positivity and share my love of all things feminine and girly and beautiful. And those are feminine traits. So do you see how they can kind of intertwine? It's not so black and white. And so our traits and how we define masculinity and femininity for ourselves and how that shows across in our personality, it's all going to be very different. But we all have both sides and I want to make that very clear because some people tend to think that it's only one or the other and it's really not like that. And even the most feminine people in the world do have masculine traits or interests. In conclusion, I want you all to know that it is okay to just be yourself. And if you are feminine like me, then I hope that you can celebrate that. I hope that you can let that shine because you deserve it. You deserve to be happy. And if being feminine and liking feminine things does that for you, then I hope that you can do that for yourself. Also, I've gotten a lot of requests to share more about femininity and how to become more feminine. And I want you to know that it is totally subjective. And I know that there's videos and articles and things out there that give feminine advice and it says you have to be this way and you have to do this and you have to stand like this and talk like this and do this and do that. And yes, there are feminine ways of doing things in order to be perceived as feminine, but I want you to know that it is okay if that's not who you are because that is the most important thing. Yes, you can be feminine, but you don't have to check all the boxes. It doesn't have to be a step-by-step -step process. I just want you to know that because I feel like so many people are so hard on themselves for not being a certain way. And you see people out there that want to change everything about who they are and their entire persona for the sake of femininity. And if they want to do that, that's totally fine. But I feel like it's more important to embrace the specific feminine qualities that you have. And it's okay to learn more and implement more in your life, but I don't want you to feel tied down to being a certain way or to feel like you're not enough because you're not a certain way. That's not what femininity is about. It's okay to be yourself. And I think it's really important to keep evolving and learning new things and growing as a person. But it's not necessary to change everything about who you are in order to fit a mold if it's not authentic to you. And you absolutely do not have to change who you are to feel worthy. You are already worthy just the way you are. So I'm just going to end the video right here. I hope that you loved hearing about all of these myths and misconceptions about femininity because they are a very real thing. And I feel like 
it's definitely something that needs to be discussed because people are putting their entire worth into these beliefs, which are absolutely not true. If you liked this video, please feel free to give it a big thumbs up, and I hope that you will subscribe and share. And if you love pretty, girly, pink content, please make sure to check out my blog, lizzieandlace.com, and my pretty pink Instagram, at lizzieandlace. I will see you later. Bye!